this summer our parish we've been reflecting on our core values our four core values of our parish to grow deep reach wide share blessings seek unity uh, these have been in our homilies and websites and, and, and parish bulletin the values set our priorities what is important to us and so in our budgeting our resources our hiring uh, people our calendar how we use time and all those all set by our, our priorities set by our four core values grow deep reach wide share blessings and seek unity so today i want to speak to you about grow deep grow deep um, grow deep is have, growing deep in the relationship with the lord you know, it's amazing that God wants a relationship with us sinners. Um, he wants a living relationship with us to know us and be known by us, to love us and be loved by us. Um, he wants that relationship with us um, to grow deep. And that means knowing the Lord, not just knowing about the Lord. Like you might know, oh, I know Abraham Lincoln. He's a president. He's a very admired and you know, important person. Not knowing about Jesus in the past as someone in the past, but having a living relationship with the Lord here and now. But as Catholics... That's not often, as often it's not the case. You know, we get baptized, we receive our sacraments, um, come to church faithfully every Sunday, uh, follow the Ten Commandments, try to live a good life, and um, that's it. You know, we, don't, we know about the Lord, we don't know the Lord. We're connected with the church, God, the, the Lord's church, we're not connected with the Lord in the same way. So if you're not sure about that, you know, where you stand in your relationship with the Lord, um, let me pose a question to you. When did God become important to you? When did God become important to you? Now, someone asked me that question, when, Father David, when did God become important to you? I told them, January 16th, 1980. Now, up to January 16th, 1980, um, I was a kid. My family is a cradle Catholic, is baptized. My five brothers and sisters were all baptized. Mom and dad took us to church every Sunday. Uh, we went to St. Mary Magdalene School here in Altamont Springs, went to parochial school, and folks made great sacrifices. We all go to school there. And so, as, you know, as we were connected with the church. You know, we, the church was important to, to my family, for sure. And I, I went along. That's what kids do. You know? <laughs> um, but when God came important to me, January 16th, 1980, 10th grade, as between um, chorus and American history class, and right in the changing classes, a voice in my head said, be a priest. Like, and I immediately didn't have to even think about it, it just came right back, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Very age appropriate, because um, it wasn't my idea, and if it's not my idea, I want nothing to do with it. That's what teenagers say. No. <laughs> so I was, I was you know, after a while, I got used to the idea. But starting out, that was that moment when God became important to me. It didn't become like, oh, you know, love at first sight and follow Jesus and everything's fine and dandy and, that's, and I had no question in my mind. But, you know, start out with a no. <laughs> Be a priest, no. But God became important to me. And no longer could I just go on my life without God being part of that, that life. And so, you know, I started thinking about this more, reflecting on it, and talking to others, and eventually went to seminary and became a priest. And now, 40 years later, this is what I help people to do. I help God become important to people. That's what I get to do as a priest. So God is important to his people. If you ask people in a 12-step program, when did God become important to you? You know, 12-step programs um, like Alcoholics Anonymous, um, they'll tell you um, the third step. Um, the first step is, of course, when uh, you say, uh, you realize and admit that you're powerless over whatever it is, you know, drinking or drugs, or powerless over lust, or powerless over eating, overeating, powerless over shopping, over gambling, whatever it is. Whatever addiction it is, whatever affliction it is, you, you admit that you're powerless over it. Second step is to, is to say, and believe God has power over this power. Um, last week, we had Vacation Bible School. All week, we had a, a couple hundred kids here. And the theme of the week was God is good. So Monday, it was like when life changes, the response is God is good. You know, well, Tuesday, when life is scary, uh, God is good. And then when, when life is wild, God is good. When life is sad, God is good. So every day, as something in the response is life is, is whatever, God is good. And so basically, those, those kids, a couple of kids, they nailed the second step of 12 steps. You know? <laughs> this is it. You know? Coming to believe God is good. Not God is not out to get you. God is not out to punish you. 
God isn't just like that way, so far away and doesn't care about you, but God is good. And then that third step in the 12-step program is to turn your life and will over to the care of God. Believing in God is good, believing in God is power, and God desires that you to be, to this person recover from whatever addiction it is, is to turn your life and will over to that, to make that decision. And that's the day when God becomes important to that person. When you make that decision and make, that little, uh, make a little prayer, you know, I turn my life and will over you, God, that's the day when God becomes important. When did God become important to you? Ask that of married couples. Um, when I meet with couples preparing for marriage, um, in fact, they have a dinner tonight for engaged couples, um, I ask them, you know, uh, when did you first meet your spouse? And if, and if they sit there and look at, you know, I really can't remember that, you know, then I'd say, uh-oh, we got a problem here. Because <laughs> you should remember this. This is the person that became important to you, and, and, and now your life is part of your life, and it's part of your two becoming one. Um, one couple, I asked them, and, and she said, well, we met online. You know, her friends are bugging her, bugging her, bugging her. You know, go online. You can do this CatholicDating.com, whatever. And she said it just to shut him up. Well, she met this guy online, and after some weeks of going back and forth, she finally met him in a park with her friends to check this guy out. So she had a posse with her. But that's the day he became important to her. She remember that. Another couple have been married 20 years. Um, he, she was a temp at work, and then uh, he, he had got a roll of film from her um, back in the days when they had film. You remember film canisters? <laughs> and, and took out the film her and gave her the canister back. Um, nothing said. Next Monday morning, there's a note in our, with, with a piece of the film canister, a uh, note given back to him saying, um, don't you think I deserve more than a piece of plastic? <laughs> That's the day. They became important to each other. They became important to each other. So when did God become important to you? When did God become important to you? To help do this, uh, in the bulletin we've listed some things on the grow deep, you know, to encounter Christ and grow in Christ, um, such as prepare for Mass. Not just attend Mass, which of course we're obligated to do, but prepare for Mass. That means that to do, do the readings ahead of time, to, to settle in and be, take your time getting here so you can, can come here to worship God and offer the sacrifice of the Mass. Uh, so prepare for Mass. Another is daily prayer, 20 minutes of daily prayer. You say, Father, I have 20 minutes. You know, who has time for the 20 minutes? Yeah, turn off your social media, okay? <laughs> 20 minutes. You need 20 minutes of uh, quality time with your best friend, with your spouse. You know, not just in texting or not just a Christmas card, but 20 minutes of quality time daily if you just want to maintain that relationship. And same with the Lord. There's other things in the bulletin. Um, holy rest. Holy rest. Check out the bulletin to see what that means. God moments. Check out the bulletin. These are ways that you can um, prepare for God to become important to your life. But let me suggest this. You can do this right now. Well, after communion, today. And that little silence right before, after communion, and all is done, we're just gathering ourselves, is to make that prayer, Jesus, I trust in you. The divine mercy prayer. Jesus, I trust in you in you. That's putting in everything in his hands and just turning yourself over to the Lord. Jesus, I trust in you. Having that direct conversation with the Lord. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus has just given himself to you, body and blood, soul and divinity, his whole self to you. And in response to that, it's Jesus, I trust in you. So try that. See what, see what the Lord says. See what the Lord says. And when you do this, when the Lord becomes important to you, and you know the Lord, not just about the Lord, what other people say, what Grandma says, but what you know through the Scripture and through prayer, when you know the Lord and you know His great love for you, unconditional love just because He loves you, when you know the Lord, St. Paul says, we heard, what happens? For freedom, Christ has set you free. When you know the Lord, you're set free. Now, the 4th of July is coming up this Thursday, and there's going to be all kinds of talks about, you know, um, about freedom, liberty, 
you know, liberty and justice for all. We talk about our political freedom, that we don't um, have a dictatorship, but we have a representative democracy. And so we talk about political freedom. We talk about economic freedom, that I'm free to start a business. I'm free to spend 12 hours a day working myself. I'm free to fail in my business. But that's my freedom. You know, I'm free, my personal freedom. I'm free to talk to whomever I want to. I'm free to associate with whomever I want to without losing my job. Okay, I'm free to eat a pint of chocolate ice cream. You know, I get that freedom. Okay, I love that. You know, we're all those freedom. We're all about freedom. My choice. I decide what I want to do. It's all about freedom. None of that's in the Bible. It's in the water here. It's in our culture, but it's not in the Bible. The Bible doesn't care about political freedom or economic freedom or personal freedom. None of that's in the Bible. The only freedom that matters. This is what it's all about. It's what God sets us free. He sets us free from sin, from the bondage of sin. As St. Paul says, you know, I do those things I do not want to do, and I fail to do those things I should do and I want to do. That bondage of sin. That's why Christ suffered and died on the cross for us. That's why he gives himself in communion, to set us free. That's why he wants a living relationship with us, to set us free from sin. And then not just free to go out and do whatever I want, you know, eat all the chocolate ice cream, chocolate in the world. No. Set free from sin, set free from him. For that relationship with the Lord that is the source of our life and our joy. And in relationship with the Lord, then we're set free to serve, to serve others as Christ has served us. Set free to serve. The next five Sundays, all through July, Jesus is going to be telling us how we follow him, what it takes. He's going to be instructing us. Having encountered the Lord, here's what you need to do if you want to continue following him. If you want to deepen your relationship with him, you want to grow deep with him, this is what you need to do. So we're going to hear that we are to, his followers, we are to rely on others. Not just be self-reliant, not like an American culture. We are to totally rely on others. Find out more about that next week. We are to care for others along the way, like the story of the Good Samaritan. We are to love our neighbors, even those we, people we're supposed to hate, like Samaritans. We are to pray. Martha and Mary, the story is coming up in July. We are to pray at the, at the feet of the Lord. And then how we are to pray, pray to our Father, we are to beg the Lord with urgency for life itself, to our Father. And then he tells his followers what they are to do with their money. So yeah, it's home in the wallet when you are a follower of the Lord. To grow deep in the Lord, first, if, when you encounter the Lord, it becomes important to you, these things follow. This is how we are to live. So the next month, keep coming back, you'll hear more instructions. And these are instructions that set us free. They're not just rules to God wants the bosses around. They set us free. You know, to play the piano. Mark, did you ever, did you ever practice? No? You just kind of sat down and poof, it just rolled out of your fingers? No, you practice. And discipline, you do your scale, you do your arpeggios, you start with the little stuff, you start with the little box, and you, and you work at it, work at it, hours and hours and thousands of hours, and then you, you achieve a freedom to make music and not just bang around make noise, but now I'm free to pick up a piece of music and make music and, 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 and cheat music and sing and others and create music in the world, something beautiful. What freedom that comes from that discipline. And all those instructions Christ is giving us um, in the next month is, is that discipline, instructions, so we are free from sin, free for him, free for him. I'm going on vacation. I know. You say, it, yeah, so I'm going on vacation. I'll be gone. Um, so I won't be here next week, and I'll be back the following weekend. Um, in the meantime, when I get back, you know, send me an email or tell me when I get back, what happened? When you, what happened when you made that little prayer after communion, Jesus, I trust in you? Let me know what happened when you asked somebody, when did God become important to you? Or let me tell you when God became important to me. Tell me what happened. I want to know. I mean, those are stories you're not going to hear anywhere else, but boy, we need those stories. 
We need to hear those things. Let me know what happened. Send me an email. Just drop me a line. Uh, come by and see me. Let me know what happened. And that little prayer after communion, Jesus, I trust in you. I'll tell you, I think God's going to say to you. When you say, Jesus, I trust in you, you're going to hear him say, you are so important to me.